<laughs> Alright, welcome back. Welcome back to a video. New video, everybody. Um, it's the night before I head out for a massive, massive ride. Got the dragon ride uh, in three weeks' time, which is 300 kilometers and about four and a half to 5,000 meters of climbing. And so I've got to get my climbing legs on. I've also got to get used to riding long distances. Um, I'm in pretty good shape at the minute, but things can always be better. Right, let's uh, let's get down to business. I thought I'd better sit down tonight and start this video because tomorrow will just be like, as soon as I wake up, eat, get on the bike, go, and not much time for else, much else to be honest. Okay, so come around, come on, look at the route tomorrow. So we've got, um, a rough plan of 201.9k, uh, has to be over 200k, <laughs> uh, 5,000, just over 5,000 meters of climbing. So the route is split into two, and we've got like this section, and then we've got this section. And here is the, here's the elevation. Ta-da! Yeah, it looks nuts, doesn't it? So all of this section to like 100k is this first section, and the second half I've literally split it in half, so it should be really good. What's gonna be tricky about tomorrow is like feeding over such a long ride. Obviously I can stop at petrol station, I can stop here and grab more food, which is what I intend to do. Um, but obviously during an event, you might be able to use the feed stops or you have people who are able to help you out on the course. When is that? You gonna help me? <laughs> so yeah, with the help of people on the course who have volunteered to... Um, you mean you volunteered? I volunteered you, yeah. but there have been people who have volunteered. <laughs> Let's have a look provisionally at what I'm gonna eat tomorrow. Right then, food. I'm zooming in a bit, okay? I'll zoom in in my spot. <laughs> Endurance riding and uh, everything else is becoming such a big thing now. I suppose it's less talked about, or at least when, when it is talked about. Like I know GCN did a video recently where they talked to uh, some really high profile nutritionists and uh, you know they, they look at like what pros do and like what we can do to learn from the pros and things and how they're pushing the boundaries of like carbohydrate intake. And tomorrow is a potentially a seven hour day. And it's been a while since I've done a big, big day like that. So it's an opportunity to test um, with some new things and some things that already work. Um, now, I haven't been able to get my hands on a couple of products that I want to use, uh, mainly because of stock issues. So I made a supermarket run about an hour or so ago. And I picked up some sweeties and some sandwiches and uh, something special on the end which we will get to but i wanted to include this on this part on the, this section of the video so early because it sets like the groundwork so you know when you see me riding now in the next half of this video you know what i'm consuming or what i'm trying to consume um and so it helps you give that give you that picture okay so i've got like the first loop and then i've got second loop so the first loop is hour one hour two hour three each of those are 120 grams of carbohydrates in a drink so a bottle bottle two bottle three we've got banana and shrimps from the supermarket <laughs> so we've got three of those we've got milk bottles there just to spice it up a little bit so we'll see how sweets go i'm curious and i'm gonna be having quote unquote lunch. Um, I've been told it's gonna be like a real battle to not only get the food in, but also to fend off palate fatigue. So I've actually picked up a bottle of Coke, a sandwich with a fairly high fat content and salt content, because that'll generally be something I'm probably craving in the heat. And then a protein bar. Uh, there's a lot of science and research coming out now about like when you're out for a long ride that you know, stopping and having something with protein in is good, not just for during the ride, muscle breakdown and everything, but obviously recovery after the ride and for the day after. Like it all it all adds up as big picture stuff, isn't it? So we have like hour four or maybe hour five, I don't know where it will be. Um, and another milk bottle. And then hour six and the finale, 
will be this concoction, which is a sandwich in effect. It's a serene malt loaf, banana, there wasn't any normal ones left, cut in half. And then I have basically just sandwiched like 60 or 70 grams of marzipan between the two of them. Ooh. And uh, that there is 120 grams of carbohydrate. Begin. Well, you don't see that every day. 40 climbs on this route. I did not expect that. I knew there was a lot, but not 40. I'm very motivated for this today. You could probably already tell in my preparation in the zone, just ticking off these climbs. It's the name of the game today. Ticking off those climbs, pushing on when I'm feeling good. I feel good already, but just being a little bit cautious. There's a long, long way to go. So I'm going to try and check in with you every hour on the hour. We just so happen to be on a 1.9 kilometer climb at 9% average to end this first hour. It's awesome on this one. Uh, but most of them are on this first loop. They're like really like steep, short climbs climb a lot of elevation in a really short space of time you can probably see behind me that's just how steep it is so things are going well so far I was in and I'm starting to wonder if I bit off a bit more than I could chew. <laughs> I'm also realizing that there's zero or very little flat road today. So my average speed's taking a hammering because obviously I'm either going up or down. And the downhills around here are quite slow because I'm going through lanes or built up areas. So the only way to increase my speed is to go harder on the climbs, but I can't. Right, obligatory co-op stop. I picked up a pack of uh, drumsticks and some water, and uh, that should see me now for the next two hours. We've done 50k in two hours. <laughs> um, so another 50k and we'll be back at uh, the flat for some lunch. So in terms of how I've been pacing these first couple of hours, uh, every climb I've been about 80% of FTP. Um, and that's any climb that's sort of, you know, over like five minutes, which is pretty much all of them. But then uh, if there's any sort of lumps and bumps, I'm uh, surging over them. so. It's just a smidge over FTP for like maybe 30 seconds, but anything longer than that, and I just settle down again. Right, I'm uh, halfway through, well, distance-wise, I'm halfway, halfway through. 100 kilometers done in three and a half hours. I literally don't feel like I've been out on the bike. Two new bottles with um, energy in. I know I'm carrying extra weight technically now after these climbs, but 
tough. I don't feel like I actually need a sandwich, but by the way, I'm sorry about talking and eating, but I kinda gotta multitask. Although I've done 100 kilometers and I've only got 100K to go, I've only climbed two and a half thousand meters, only. So the next 100K is gonna be about three thousand meters of climbing, which is serious, because the North Wales ride I did with Nick and his dad a couple of weeks ago, that was 3,500 meters in 100K. So currently it's looking like this is gonna take me seven hours to do. And I kind of thought it was gonna take me about eight, well, seven and eight. My heart rate hasn't even got over 148, 149 beats a minute yet on any of the climbs I've done. I've been keeping myself like below 330, 320 watts. But having said that, this next bit of the ride is the real test. If I can take the lid off it and just send it within reason at most of the climbs, and the climbs on this second loop now are technically like longer. Some of them are shallower, but some of them are just as steep as the ones we've done in this first 100k. Yeah, there's definitely like a little bit of flat road in this first 100, the second 100 not so much. So I'm definitely gonna have to invest more on the climbs if I want to do the next 100k in three and a half hours. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up button. <laughs> um, I would love to do more, I would love to show you more, but I'm kind of trying to concentrate on the training side of this thing today as well. So I'm kind of showing you as much as I can. The bit you don't see is when I get back now and I'm absolutely screwed. I don't got to spend a couple of hours editing this video and thinking about a title and doing the thumbnail and then uploading it for you to watch it. <laughs> I enjoy it though. Getting higher now. Second highest point on this route today is about 350 meters above sea level. Dropping down into Ammonford. That's the theme of the second loop. Much taller climbs. Check out the views. Five hours in and it's getting kind of warm now to the point where it's like only just about bearable for me. I used to be really good in the heat, but I just don't uh, do like what I used to, obviously racing in the heat. It's a different type of thing, but I'm just not as used to it anymore. So it's good that I'm doing it today. We have up the tempo. Oh, I'm struggling to hold the GoPro. Five hours of riding and two hours and 15 minutes is in power zone three, so. 30 minutes in zone four, starting to bite on the legs now. But this is where it counts, isn't it? This is where some people would turn home. So 55k to go now and what lies ahead of the next 15k is probably one of the most challenging sections of the route. We climb to the top of the Black Mountains from uh, like Llandoilo. It's through this lane, uh, it's up and down, it's never consistent really. Off the mountain, one final climb into Armonford. And then we're gonna stop at a calf to have a well-earned coffee and maybe a cake. And then we have like the final 20, 25K to do. So this section now, like mentally, is the draggy bit, the bit that I don't really wanna do. Um, 
like the last bit is easy enough mentally because you're basically there but this bit this like 140 to 170k 180k it's messing with my head and uh starting to flag a bit um and these roads that you probably noticed from the footage but they're they're such like tiring roads like i'm constantly being bumped around on the saddle um my arms are aching shoulders neck and it's mad really because you know i've climbed three and a half thousand meters but if you climb this in the alps or anywhere else really other than the uk and i've been to a fair few places it's just it's just not as tiring it's not the same the uk roads they are Ah, lovely, Black Mountain. 4,200 meters climbed in five hours and 58 minutes. Not bad. <laughs> Get to the top of this climb. Downhill, bit of morale coming. Woo! I need it, boy oh boy. In the UK, you can always find an ice cream van on the top of a mountain. Not stopping today though. No Mr. Whippy for me. <laughs> it's just dawned on me that I've just hit a pretty big milestone like on this ride. 100, and, so it's 100 miles in just a smidge over six hours. <laughs> but with 4,300 meters of climbing. Like I've done hilly 100 miles before, but that's taking the biscuit a bit. Ah, thank you. I'm alright, I should get me home. <laughs> That is it. Top of the last climb of the day. We're just under 5,200 meters climbed. Ah, oh, I'm a shell of a man. Oh, that was good. That was good fun. Ride complete. What an experience that was. Seven hours, 37 minutes. 200K, I made sure I did the 200. Almost 6,000, 5,700 kilojoules. 5,000, just shy of 5,200 meters of climbing. 257 watts normalized, just over 26K an hour. 378 TSS. 131 average heart rate, 3 hours in zone 3, 40 minutes in zone 4. <laughs> Way better than expected. Couple of takeaways, like main thing, 120 grams of carbs an hour at a minimum works. There's no doubt about it. Like my legs were still getting like heavy and sore and fatigued, but I still felt like I had energy, uh, if that makes any sense. So. If you're gonna try something like this, I would highly recommend it. It's the first time I've done it in a while, so where I've tried to eat a lot of food, so I wouldn't be worried too much about like just going out on a weekend and doing a big ride and, and testing it and worrying about like gut problems, like obviously go easy, but yeah, 
train the body and you'd be surprised what it can handle so that's it I'm gonna edit this video now thank you so much for watching give it a like subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next episode